Now, when we come to the issue of eating pork, some people ask why Christians eat pork when it is forbidden in the Old Testament. Well, Jesus said in the New Testament that it is not what goes into your mouth that defiles you, but what comes out of your mouth. This means that the words you speak, the actions you take, and the thoughts you harbor are what matter to God, not the food you eat. Jesus declared all foods clean. Therefore, Christians believe that dietary laws from the Old Testament were fulfilled and transcended by the teachings of Jesus. We no longer live under the Old Covenant, but under the New Covenant established by Christ. So, eating pork is permissible for Christians because it is seen as spiritually irrelevant to their realm. Ationship with God. For those who have just come, now we said this to evening is going to be just an open discussion. If you have any questions, there is a pen and paper going around. If you'd like to write your question, or if you choose to say it out loud, then it is entirely up to you. Absolutely so true. Well, we pray for everyone. But I am always saying this when you go there, you're not going to see no one but Jesus. So, it's up to you, my dear friend. No hard feelings are not judging. Believe me, it's only the Lord. There's no other God but Him. There's no other one that will welcome you to heaven but Him because He is the gateway to heaven. He's the way. He's the only one. This has got nothing to do with you being a Christian. There are Christians that do not even believe in Jesus. They're Christian by name but not by deed. So many Christians are so totally strangers to Christ. They've never known Him. They're not interested to know Him. Christ being God, this has got nothing to do whether you are a Christian or not. It's nothing personal. It's not because I'm a Christian. I'm claiming my Jesus being God. No. He is God. He chose me for Him. He created me for Him. So He chose me. I didn't choose Him. I would not have known how to choose Him. So, um, Jesus is God. Jesus Christ is God. So, God is the creator of everything. With God's plan, with God's wish. And so the human side all in the end times and the fulfillment of end times prophecies. An example, the temple needs to be rebuilt. This is one of the signs of the end times, which is the 21st century. There are certain things that will take place in Israel before the Lord's second coming to put an end to all this evil that is happening in our time and age. And if we've been noticing more so since 2020, Things are progressing so rapidly in a very evil way that humanity, I don't think they have experienced at a global level. Maybe people will say, but these things have happened throughout human history. That is true, but it happened at a local sort of level, not at a global level. So, in our times, everything is concentrated globally. This has never ever happened. The only time it happened was at the time of the Great Flood, our father Noah. That was a global event. But since then, there has never been a global event of such magnitude as it is happening in the 21st century. Which is the end of times? The 21st century is the end of times century, definitely in the biblical sense. So, um, now regardless of whether it was April or December, I take it it's December. And I have my own reasons why. When I don't want to sort of bombard, like sort of bombard you with it, um, but whether it's December or April, Jesus was born 100% and he came to save the world. So, you can celebrate Christmas, it's okay, it's okay, celebrate the birth of the Messiah. But let me tell you this, the birth of the Messiah and the resurrection of the Messiah should be a celebration of every single day of your life, not just once a year and the rest of the 364 days. See you later, Lord Jesus. No. Jesus must be born in you every day. Jesus must be resurrected in you every single day. Yes, there was a historical time where Christ was born and Christ was crucified, buried and resurrected. That is absolutely true. However, when we take it in the spiritual sense and the contemplative sense, we need to celebrate the birth and the resurrection of the Messiah. Every single day of our life on earth, every day you get, you wake up, say, Lord, be born in me today and be resurrected in me today. Because in your birth the hope of salvation came, and in your resurrection the sealment of salvation was done and completed. So I need that every day. But you can celebrate also in December. 
My father is greater than I Jesus praying to God. A nutshell kind of answer. We touch base on this maybe yesterday as well. It is the time now to write them. I hope I can answer those questions. I'm very honored, very privileged, and very blessed to be with you. Absolutely so true. God works in mysterious ways. I would not have ever dreamt of being here in Adelaide, let alone in this beautiful and blessed church. May God bless you always. Now we said this evening is going to be just an open discussion. If you have any questions, write them down or say them aloud. I'm going to my death. I'm dying. I'm dying. I deserve this death because I committed so many crimes. Yet I was guilty, Jesus said. I forgive you. For a grown-up man, 33 years of age, to be stripped fully naked and crucified in front of people. They were making fun of him. But Jesus accepted it all. Why? Because this is the way the Lord changed the human heart. We need to understand this. We believe that God became man. This is where some people attack Christianity, claiming we say that a man is God. No, we don't say this man became God. We say God became man because if a man becomes God, then that is blasphemy. We never say the man Jesus became God that is blasphemy. We say God became man. And if any human being believes in the Almighty God, the Infinite, the Sovereign Authority, Creator of everything and everyone that is visible and invisible, if they say that God cannot become a man, then they have limited the sovereignty and the authority of God. Therefore, He's no longer God. If God can't be a man, then he is no longer God. He is limited. He is limited, and I can't believe in a limited, finite God. So, God became man. When God became man, who is he now? It is Christ. Christ is the unity or the person that unites divinity and humanity. Christ is the person that unites divinity and humanity. Now, when he became a man, he took on the human nature, became a human being like everyone else like every human being. If God couldn't become man, then he would be limited, and that limitation would mean he is not God. God's becoming man demonstrates his omnipotence and sovereignty. It shows his ability to do what we think is impossible. The divine nature and the human nature united in one person, Jesus Christ. That is the mystery and the miracle of the Incarnation. It is the foundation of our faith. It is the demonstration of God's love and humility. It is the assurance of our salvation. In Christ, we see God. In Christ, we meet God. In Christ, we are reconciled to God. This is why the Incarnation is central to our faith. This is why we celebrate Christmas. This is why we worship Jesus. This is why we follow Him. He is not just a prophet, not just a teacher, not just a good man. He is God in the flesh. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is the Savior of the world. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. This is the Gospel. This is the good news. This is the message we proclaim to the world. This is the hope we offer to humanity. This is the light that shines in the darkness. This is the life that overcomes death. This is the victory that defeats sin. This is the love that conquers all. This is the faith that sustains us. This is the joy that fills us. This is the peace that comforts us. This is the grace that saves us. This is the power that transforms us. This is the truth that sets us free. This is the glory that awaits us. This is the eternal life that God has promised us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.